Hello, my dear friend. Welcome back to my channel. This is Junie's Plan with Me. If you're new here and get confused about these blooming flowers on the cover page, let me tell you what's going on here. As a big fan of both bullet journal and pop-up art, I combine them together and make my own buju designs every month. And hopefully, you'll find it helpful or inspiring. As you can see, this month we're going to make some lovely lotus flowers. The reasons I chose this theme for June is because of an ancient Chinese poetry, which I'm going to talk about later. But for now, grab your notebook, a ruler, a pencil, a scissor, and some glue. Let's get started. Or you can just sit back, grab some tea or coffee, and enjoy today's video. Just a quick reminder: I've been doing pop-up bujo every month this year. So if you're interested in rose, coffee, cherry blossom, or picnic theme, you can find them in my previous plan with me video, and I'll also leave the links in the description for you. And before we start today's bujo journey, as always, I want to introduce the new stickers I made for this theme. There are two lotus flower stickers, one subtitle page, and one days in week sticker. You can also find the calendar page if you choose the digital download option. Find more details in my online shop at junisunstudio.com, and I really appreciate your support and love. Okay, now let's jump right into the pop-up tutorial. Here, I made a guideline version to make it clear for you. It's actually quite simple, and every piece is symmetrical. As you can see, the flower is symmetrical. The first piece. Let's start with dividing the space into six sections from the center, and each one's angle is 60 degree. For the petal part, I use 2.3 centimeter and 4.7 centimeter, but you can adjust it based on how big you want it to be. And then just rotate and repeat to fill up the whole flower. Mark these two one centimeter long rectangles on each side, one centimeter away from the center, paralleled with the folding line between the top and the bottom points. Remember to make the edge a little bit curvy and the end a little bit pointy to mimic the flower's shape. The second layer is pretty much the same except changing the angle to 50 degree, and there will be a gap left. Save some space on one end as glue section, and the rest dimensions are as labeled. Same for the third layer, and this time the angle is changed to 12 degrees. Besides the glue section on the end, there are also two extra pieces on the second and the fifth fold. Also, for this layer, instead of drawing the whole petal, just put two half together, so there will be a different overlay effect later when you put them together. The last one is a little bit different because we want its final shape to look like closed instead of opening, but it's still pretty easy if you follow my steps. So that's all you need to do as basic parts of the flower. Here, I also made a colored version, which is available in my online shop, along with other parts I'm going to use later. And now let's build it up. Piece number one will be the base. Just need to be folded in the middle and make sure the cut-through rectangle perfectly overlap. Then for the second one, follow the shape and fold into six sections plus the glue part. The one I'm doing here is my testing version. The template from my shop will have the guideline to help you for this step. Here, I only print on one side of printing paper, so I need to decide which side I want to show in the final look. Since the piece will be on the second bottom layer, I want the pink color to face up. Now, after folding, it's time to glue the end together. In order to make it easier, you may want to fold it in half and then glue the connection part. Same method. Now you know how to work on the last two pieces. Except for the third and fourth layer, we want the paper side to be the opposite, so the pink color can be shown better. But of course, if you are using double-sided color paper, then doesn't matter. By the way, the glue I'm using is Tacky Glue from Alins. I'll leave the link and information of all the supplies I use in this video in the description box, as always. After these two parts are down, it's time to glue them together. Then put it through the second piece and the first piece, like what I'm showing here, and glue the two small rectangles on the back of the base. 
and ta-da, we have our first lotus flower down. Repeat the same steps and now we have two more. But besides that, I also prepare some lotus leaves. And of course, some dragonflies for the details later. Depends on your own preference, you can just use the notebook page or make a water pattern base. The most basic pop-up mechanic here is to place the flower on the center binding line. But first, I want to figure out the overall layout to make sure the balance between flowers and the leaves. The two flowers on the bottom will require a little bit more work, but we'll talk about it in a second. Now let's glue the top flower on. Just simply glue one side on first, and of course, place the leaf wherever you want it to be. Then put glue on the other side and close the notebook. In this way, you can make sure the base can be closed perfectly. Then for the second one, find the spot you want it to be, and then we need help from some extra paper. Here I use the same pattern paper so the mechanic can merge into the background better. Cut a long piece, a little bit longer than the distance between the binding line and the flower's location. Glue one end on the back of the flower, and on the other end also fold the same distance as the glue part to the flower. When you place it on the notebook, make sure the end align with the binding line and then you're ready to glue it on. So basically, for this part, we're trying to make a parallelogram structure. If you want to hide the structure, the best way is to put some lotus leaves on top of it. But before that, I'm going to place another flower on the left first. If you couldn't follow my steps on the previous one, here you can watch me doing it again. After setting up the last flower, now we can glue back all the leaves. For the one on the mechanic, just make sure the size of the leaf is smaller than the length of the strip. Otherwise, it could be folded when you close the notebook. As I'm working on it, I want to quickly mention that with different shapes or different number of petal, you can get different results. I actually almost used this design for my rose theme in February, if you remember, I did a Valentine's theme, but for that one, I eventually decided to go with a rose bouquet design. Anyway, feel free to give a try and make your own version. Don't forget to tag me on Instagram at Juni Sun Xiaomei on the post, not on the description, so I won't miss your lovely work. Last but not least, add on more details with dragonflies. The transparent plastic material I'm using is from one of the packages I received, and some of you asked me where to get it in store. Thank you for my lovely subscriber Anna Caron telling me that you can find it at Bleak Art Store. It's called Carded Carbonate Paper and it has different thickness. She got 005, which is 5mm, and it works great. So I glue the dragonfly on one end and glue the other end on one of the petals. You can try placing them on different layers of flowers and the effect will be different too. Just make sure that they won't stick out when you close the notebook. And now we're pretty much done with the cover page. I actually struggle a lot where to put the June title and I don't want to ruin the whole picture so I decided to hide it on the back of one lotus leaf. And since the theme has strong Chinese elements and style, I want to write down June in Chinese. But after another run of struggle, I eventually rewrite again on the top, as you can see here. So yeah, I hope the tutorial is clear enough. Leave comments and let me know if you have any questions. And you can also check out my online shelf for the templates if this is too hard for you. Now let's move on to the following pages, and I'll be mainly using Tumble Duo brush pen and watercolor. For the monthly view, instead of using the whole spread and making a simple calendar on the left side, because usually I don't have too much to write on it. Then I use the white gel pen for the dates. The calendar here, I set each day 3 by 4 dots if you're doing the similar layout. Then on the right side, I'll use it for monthly go and to-do list with my subtitle sticker. I also add on gratitude after filming, but you know, making it fit you is the most important thing. 
On the bottom, as you may already saw some pencil guide, I'm going to draw some lotus flowers with watercolor. Honestly, I originally wanted to do a traditional Chinese way which will look like this, but it required totally different paper and paint, and it's kind of challenging to apply a lot of water on the notebook paper, so here I can just try my best. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this 160 gsm paper from Notebook Therapy. The one I'm using right now, I bought it myself and also did a review on it if you want to take a look. But I do have a collaboration with them, so if you use my code JUNISWIN10 or my link in the description, you can get 10% off for your purchase while I also get a small amount of affiliate income. Get back to the drawing, I use really light paint to set the base and then add darker pink on the outside of the petal. Also give some line texture to it. Then don't forget to darken the shadow parts as well. The center part should be bright yellow, and at the end, I also use brownish pink to emphasize the outline a little bit, especially the pointy ends. Then for the leaf, theme technique, color it with softer green as base, and depends on how dark you want it to be, keep adding more layers on it. When you're done with the base, you can work on some texture and the shadow parts. By the way, if you're new to watercolor, I would definitely suggest you to try it on watercolor paper first because it's a totally different experience. I'll leave this space under the calendar as my social media tracker, so for now, we're done with this page and now let's move on to the next spread. On the left side, I'll use it for my mood tracker. One thing I love about flower theme is that I can use petal to represent days. I did it in February Rose theme and April Cherry Blossom theme, and now it's time to do it again in the Lotus Flower theme. Honestly, I'm not really sure how many petals I draw, but I'm sure it's more than 30, so I'll leave it for later to fill up the dates. As I'm working on that, I want to talk about this Lotus Flower theme. The Lotus Flower is regarded in many different cultures, especially in Eastern religions, as a symbol of purity, enlightenment, self-regeneration and rebirth. In Chinese culture, its characteristics are a perfect analogy for a human condition. Even when its roots are in the dirtiest waters, the lotus produces the most beautiful flower. And the reason I pick it for my dream theme is because of this poetry. The emerald lotus leaf reach as far as where water and skies meet, and lotus blossom bathing in sunshine exhibit a distinguished dazzling pink. It describes such beautiful scene at Xihu in Jun. I've never gotten a chance to visit there in person, but I really like this stunning image. After writing down the legend, I'm going to work on the happy tracker on the right side. The X and Y axis style is still one of my favorite layouts, but these days, I prefer to use mini calendar because I can easily see the final results at the end of the month and analyze it more clearly. Again, this is just my personal preference. For beginners, if 6 habits are too overwhelming, maybe start with 3 or 4, and of course, if you need more, feel free to modify it. The next is brain dump. I always love brain dump page because usually that's where I can decorate freely. But in today's setup, I decided to use my stickers. If I have the supplies to make traditional Chinese drawings, I would definitely do that. But here I did it in watercolor and scan, edit to make it into stickers. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. On the right side, I'm going to make a daily log, or you can call it hourly tracker, I think. I tried it in May and April. Honestly, sometimes I wasn't able to track every single hour, but overall, I think it was really helpful. Especially as a freelancer, I do want to see where I spend my time and how's the balance between work and life. And sometimes I'll be surprised how much time I waste on, let's see, Instagram when I'm supposed to just make a post and leave. Scrolling down to look for infinite information is definitely a problem nowadays and I really want to avoid it and spend my time wisely. So yeah, maybe you don't need it if you have a regular work schedule like 9 to 5, but I think it could be really helpful if you want to track how you spend hours during your personal time. In some way, it could help you to build a better sense of time and be more productive. And finally, we're on the weekly spread. You know I love Dutch door. 
So here I've already done some preparation for it by cutting out the rough shape of the drawing I want to make on the edge. And now I'm going to finish it. It may look familiar to you if you watched my February plan with me video, and that rose dark store is still one of my favorite until now. Before drawing the flowers, let me place the note on the left side first. One thing I like Dutch door is that I can have the note section available on the side whenever I need to write things down. As for the weekly layout, this month I want to go back to two weeks per spread design. Again, you can adjust it to one week per spread, which is probably more commonly used if you have a long to-do list or prefer to have more space left. And now it's time to color the flowers. As I'm working on that, I want to talk about the 20 giveaway I was holding in the past few weeks. Thank you so much for everyone who participated. The winners have been announced in my YouTube community. Please contact me either through email or Instagram DM. I really wish I could get gifts to every single one of you because you've been giving me so much support and love. It's been a year and a half since I started this channel and no matter when you join my bujur journey, I'm so glad you're here watching me drawing and listening to me talking. I'll hold more giveaways soon, and if you didn't win this one, I wish you the best luck for the next time. After finishing the first weekly spread, now I'm working on the second one, which is pretty much the same as the previous page. Actually, by the time this video is released, I'm already on the airplane to Hawaii. My husband booked our super delay honeymoon flight after we got vaccine recently. I know it's been a really tough year for everyone, I always work at home, so it's not that bad for me, but for a lot of you, life has been hard. So no matter where you are, my friends, here and there, I hope you can have a good mood every day and stay safe until you get the vaccine. After finished drawing, I'm putting the days in week on each page. As for the last page, I saved the right side empty for some personal use later, so I won't share it here. And what's funny is that I only realized that the first two weeks days are totally wrong at the end of the setup. June starts on Tuesday, but I accidentally signed June 1st to Monday. But it's okay, this is not my first time making mistakes. I use fixing tape to cover it and rewrite it. And on the bottom of the last week, I'll use it for a monthly summary as always. We're almost there, but it's not done yet. I have a final touch to do, which is this shiny watercolor pigment. I had it for a long time, but always forgot to use. Finally, I remember it this time. It's not a necessary step, just to add some shiny elements to make it more interesting. And as I'm working on that, I want to give a special thank you to my new Patreon members. Moon LB, Julian, Sophie, Letty, Donna, Fat Cupcake, and Brianna. Thank you so much for your support and love. In my Patreon community, as monthly subscription, you can find digital download of my Bujo spreads, monthly phone wallpaper, get a chance to vote for my future video topic, and more bonus content. That would be a really good way to support me and this channel. But of course, you being here watching until the end of this video on YouTube also means a lot to me. I really, really appreciate it. And here comes the final flip through. This month's pop-up is not the most complicated one in my opinion, but I really think it's the most fun one I've ever made. And I'm really excited to start using it. I hope you enjoy watching this video and maybe find it helpful and inspiring. Add a flower emoji in your comments down below so I know you've been with me until the end. And that's it for today's video. I'll be back from my trip before you even notice it. And I'll see you very soon in my next one. Bye!